Breaking news, Defense Secretary Mattis uh, just a while ago saying that U.S. forces attacked Iranian-backed forces in Syria. Joining us now to react to all of this is retired Marine Lieutenant Colonel and host of War Stories, Oliver North. I think this is significant, Colonel North, the fact that we are actually now attacking surrogates, if you will, of Iran, don't you? Well, it is significant. And, and in fact, there are a lot of significant events surrounding this particular event. The place that took place on Al Tanf is a Syrian border post in what's called the Three Corners area, where the borders of Syria, Jordan, and Iraq meet, David. It's astride the Euphrates tributary and a main highway that runs east from Iran across Anbar province to Iraq, in Iraq, all the way to Syria and therefore to Lebanon. In other words, the Iranians need this route reopened to secure a land route to support Hezbollah. That's what this was all about. I see. Hezbollah, which was a creation of Iran, and which essentially controls uh, Lebanon right now. Now, the U.S., so the U.S. is hitting Iranian forces in Syria. Uh, nobody hates the Iranians more than the Saudi Arabians, and the president is on his way to Saudi Arabia. Coincidence? Well, I think in this particular case, because what was happening was the U.S. supported Magawir al Thura resistance or rebel force was actually being approached by a, a the, the force that's described as a pro-Iranian force. Now that, that pro-Iranian force included apparently now, I'm getting this back channel, Okay. Uh, it included Syrian troops, Hezbollah troops, and Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, and they were coming, they were warned, transmissions were met, sent through the Russians to stop, the USF-16 did their cold passes, then they fired warning shots, and when the column continued to approach, they were hit, and it knocked out a number of armored vehicles and trucks. Uh, I'm told that the force consisted of several hundred Syrian army troops, Hezbollah fighters, and likely members of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. Okay. And it was a threat, so it was described, as, I think, properly by the Pentagon as a force protection measure. Interesting. Now, clearly, the, the Saudis are, are not upset about this. this. This fits right into what they would like to see happen. The Shia forces moved out of the Middle East. Uh, so we are helping right now, in a way, uh, the Saudi Arabians. And clearly, uh, we have a disdain, maybe a justifiable disdain, but a disdain for that Iranian deal that Obama signed. What do we get in return? What will the president, when he's in Saudi Arabia, ask for? We've heard some talk about uh, a so-called uh, Arab NATO, which would, would fight terrorism. Yeah. Look, uh, the, the message to Saudi Arabia and the other monarchies that are attending this big conference in Riyadh, the message from President Trump is very clear. I'm not Obama. I'm going to show you a 180 degree shift from the last administration's policies. And that means I understand you know, and I know you know, that the number one issue for you guys is the Shiite, monist, the Shiite theocracy in Iran. They're looking for a U.S. commitment to protect against the Ayatollah's right. nukes. Here's the wild card in all this. Quickly. The elephant in the room is, does Pakistan provide nuclear weapons to the Saudis? That's Oof. not on the agenda, but it's going to be talked about. Wow. If that happens, it could change the equation. Colonel Oliver North, thank you very much. Good to Always see you. Good, good to be weekend. with you, David.